and welcome everyone to episode 92 of One Piece at a Time, the One Piece read-through podcast where we read and discuss five chapters of the One Piece manga each and every week. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host and freelance letterer at Shonen Jump, Brandon Bovia. How are you doing, Brandon? I'm doing pretty good. I'm, of course, Brandon Bovia, mon- letterer of manga like Dragon Ball Super and Kaijin Over 8 and uh, many, many more. Uh, and ah, I'm just ready to kind of dive into things. This is a got a great set this week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a lean pumping. and mean set of uh, set of chapters. Just because not a whole lot else is really going on. It's it's very much firmly focused on here's the fights. Yep. And honestly, pretty good fights. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I came away pretty satisfied. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of oh hell yeah moments in, in this, and it's it's it comes across as very satisfying. But yep. uh Let's just dive into it with chapter 411, Nami versus Khalifa. And uh, we have what the, the, the Baroque works are up to now. Uh, they sell that cafe, then sure enough, they are working to make a new Spider's Cafe. Wow, they're all going legit. <laughs> yeah, they, they really are. Uh, the dog looks happy. It's the, the, the princess Miss, Miss Merry Christmas is looking f- uh, f- having happy. I don't know. It just It's... It's weirdly wholesome. <laughs> yeah. Also, is this the longest cover story we've had? This one's four, volume 40. <laughs> it might be. It really might be. It, it, it's been it a journey. It doesn't feel that long. Yeah, it's been a really... It's been great, honestly. I, yeah, I this is definitely this my favorite one so far. Because surprisingly enough, yeah. it, it ends with this set of chapters. Yeah. We'll see. How, we'll, see we'll talk about how it ends when we get there. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, from Little Garden to Party Town to Prison Break to yeah, everything. It's just all all involved. Like, holy cow. Yep. <laughs> but last time we had a supersized Robin, at least according to Khalifa, show up. Chopper. <laughs> like, oh, wait, <laughs> it's actually Robin. Chopper. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, and she's, the funny thing is she's still convinced that, that that's Nami. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, of course, you know, Nami, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, with the reindeer, the horns and the hat, like, that's Chopper, but, like, what's going on here? Yeah, what what, what happened? How did this all change? And I was, I was honestly, when I saw Khalifa go for the kick, the Tempest kick, and do some damage, I'm like, oh, it's going to be the same way as Kumidori. He's just going to smack her down, and that'll be the end of the fight. But, no, Nami, I think it doesn't happen because Nami actually grabs his attention and prevents him from actually attacking her because... She's like, what's happened to you, Chopper? What's going on? And, of course, she gets attacked as well. I love this little exchange. It's like, I'm telling you, I never thought that was you. <laughs> yeah, and then Khalifa. this is this running bit here where, like, Nami just completely ignores Khalifa because she's more worried about Chopper. <laughs> <Khalifa's> like, <laughs> How rude! How I'm being you? ignored! <laughs> Nobody ignores me. Yep. What, the, what the heck? And then Chopper, proving he has no tolerance for fan service, tosses out the bath. Yeah, <laughs> tosses out the bath like it falls down, like pretty much down to the bottom floor. And like it, it, it looks like it landed on Sanji. Yeah, it looks like it just he tosses out and just lands on Sanji as he's stuck like that. Like I, I gotta say, at least Nami's able to actually move. But I have to assume that he was beat up after he became the the, the smooth. Yeah, or he's just either that or he's just like wallowing in his own just defeat, <laughs> something like that. But uh, yeah, it's just Chopper going wild. Khalifa's like, "What's going on here?" And Nami being like, "I'm trying to get through to this monster. This like I'm like waiting for a King Kong situation almost." Uh, yeah, <laughs> going on here, but I don't fully understand exactly what happened in this next bit because I, I, we see him pound the ground kind of crash through the wall roar down the stairs or whatnot and then he's just kind of gone yeah I'm, I'm having trouble understanding like where the perspective is like is he basically like is he high up or is he down back on the ground i i have no idea he just sort of disappears <laughs> that's yeah either way he's he has he looks like a truck ran through this room. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I love how this is called uh, Nami versus Khalifa. And the first nine pages are spent just on Chopper wrecking havoc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Khalifa's ready for a fight because she tries to use the Tempest kick and uh, Nami's able to dodge it. And this is how she uh, figures out that, hey, if I just get wet, I can wipe wipe off the bubbles. And I'll be I'll be just fine. 
of course, Khalif is not going to allow that. No, that's that's a bit of a problem. Yep. But then, oh, man, there's, there's some really like interesting bits here where Nami's trying to fight back with her climb a baton, unfortunately drops it. And again, we get another variation on how they each of the members specialize their their six moves because we get the bendy finger pistol from Khalifa. Look, looks like it's a little hard to dot. Like I, I guess my understanding of it like because it's kind of coming in like a wave like it would be a little bit unpredictable yeah i I have to imagine it's kind of a callback to her whip because the strange thing is she had that that thorn whip during the attack on gali la but (laughs) she never uses it again (laughs) look bubble powers are just they're just better yeah she got the bubbles and (laughs) like okay i'm done i I don't need that anymore whatever (laughs) (laughs) uh, nami actually thanks her for doing that because knocking her around actually helps knock away the bubbles and she starts, she, I like this reference. That's like, this isn't like my old magic show. That was crap. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Now she's kind of, uh, she's a proper uh, weather forecaster now. I, I love that. That's sort of like the, the angle that Oda takes with the dialogue here. Uh, mm-hmm. Definitely going for the weather girl aspect of the yeah. whole thing. And also apologizing for how dumb that fight was at Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> he might've gotten a bit of flack for that one. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, yeah, she basically causes the rain tempo, which wipes away all the bubbles, and she's all good. I and we get that classic Nami sticking her tongue out. That always yes, that's always fun. That's how you know that she's kind of taking control back. Yeah, because then we start getting the mirage tempo, and it just looks cool. The visual effect on that is awesome, and it it, it makes sense for like th- this is kind of her way of you know like avoiding damage basically. Yeah. She, yeah. she can't she can't fight directly, so she has to continue her trickster aspect, and it works. And I, I, I like that we can see just how she's gotten better at this, what this perfect climb of baton can actually do, and really just her own battle prowess now, because she says, okay, I think I finally understand your power. Let's see how well you know me. And she uses her uh, Mirage Tempo Feta Morgana, where we get five variations of Nami. And yeah, she's got clones. <laughs> yeah, we've got the clones and all the <laughs> super skinny, muscular, uh, little squat, and then child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's like, well, I, oh, mirages. I bet only one of them is real. Well, that's true. But the, and there's our five fire, uh, thunderballs coming at you. But which one do you dodge? And she fails. Yep. <laughs> and we end the chapter with uh, her getting electrocuted. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, if each one is uh, sending out like five thunderballs, then suddenly you've got like 20 coming at you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a problem. <laughs> we do have an SBS. Uh, we, we get somebody asking if Sodom and Gomorrah or if, uh, named after the, uh, the towns Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, they're like, did you decide to have the world government represent the overwhelming power of God in the story? Uh, one piece isn't that deep. <laughs> That's why I, I got the names. Mm, so it's not that deep. Mm. <laughs> I don't know about. I think he's selling himself short. I think you're selling yourself a little short, buddy. <laughs> yeah, a little bit there. Also, we get a name for uh, and backstory for the old man that gave Usopp rice balls back when he was in his lowest uh, point and hungry uh, back in uh, Water Seven. He used to be uh, a, go by the name Hapa, a bandit with a heart. He moved from there, from town, uh, the town of Good Food, the, of Poochie. He divorced and is currently single, meaning he made the w- rice balls himself. The water meat, the famous dish, is inside the rice balls, so they taste good. Oh, I'm so, hungry. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, that's that's kind of cool. We actually get a bit of a backstory. Also, uh, we get we get it like, why is Nami able to actually hurt Luffy when he's rubber? <laughs> it's like, uh, it's because they're full of compassion. It's, it's, yeah, they're it's, friendship it's, punches. It's friendship punch- punches. They're they're effective, or you could also just go with they're comedy punches. They're effective, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yes. Yeah. Chapter four hundred and twelve. You missed your chance, and uh, well, we knew that uh, Crocodile and Mister One stayed behind, but uh, yeah, Hina still very powerful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> She's still got them. Still pretty strong there because uh, she caught Mister Three and Mister Two. Ah. I didn't even realize Mr. Three was still around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that the, uh, the, the diversion ploy only worked so well. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, Mr. Two just could not do it uh, one-on-one. So yep. it, it makes me very curious just how strong Hina is. Yeah, that's a good point. It's an impressive devil fruit at the very least. So yeah, we got, uh, we got the, the beginning of the next chapter and Khalifa's looking a little crispy, uh, but not, not out. 
She's not out at all. I love all the Nami clones doing the same pose. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really <laughs> cool, awesome. honestly. I, I like all the variations. It's, it's, it's it has the right mix of silly but also fun. It, well, silly. And yeah, cool. and it's it's satisfying too. Oh, it is. And she's just, you know, getting a chance to brag a bit. It's like, ah, it's a lot more powerful now. And just wait till I bring out the next technique because you're going to go down then. Uh, and she's like, oh, another prediction? No, it's a forecast. I'll take. Oh, <laughs> I've taken control of the humidity and the temperature in this room. This room's climate belongs to me, which is just awesome. Although I do yes. want to make a, a, a funny observation I just thought of. So I, <laughs> I play a bit of Final Fantasy fourteen. Child Nami looks like one of the character races in that game, Alala Fell. <laughs> oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah. I see it. I had like those that, proportions, especially when you can see it from behind. That is Alala yeah, Fell. Yeah. Like, which yeah. in that case, I demand a One Piece crossover so Alala Fell could look like Mini Nami here. You know, <laughs> I feel I'm kind of surprised it hasn't happened yet. I do. I remember Yoshi P saying at some point that he was like a big fan of One Piece. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I demand it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's got to happen. And Khalif is just going back to me. Khalif was like, ah, whatever. You're, you, the six powers are still better than the you taking control of the climate. So she goes after the Nami that looks like Nami. He's like, nope, oh, that's not the real one. Even, you know, we have the clones, but like the Nami that looks the most realistic or the one that looks like the real one is not her, uh, which I thought was a cool little twist because, you know, Khalif is thinking the same thing that the reader is like, oh, yeah, we'll just attack the one that looks the most normal. Yeah. And it, it turns out she's in the uh, the big one, <laughs> which is, is pretty fun. And I, I'm, I'm trying to real uh, like, tr- I'm not sure if her giving the weather forecast type thing is cool or corny. It's a little of both. I, I, I lean towards towards it being cool, but <laughs> yeah, like it works, but it's also like she doesn't talk about the weather that much, so it feels a little off. But I think it's it's just her fun way of. I, like, she's finally getting to style on her, which yeah. is why I think it's it's satisfying. And I, I don't think she ever really does it like that much again. It's it's the kind of thing I would I like this one time. <laughs> yeah, it works this this one time. It shows, it, and it does help show the evolution. Like this is not the, that too. Her running constantly. This is an actual fight. Yeah, I also think it it, it does double time as kind of uh, explaining to the reader what the hell is happening. Yeah, that that too, that too. But we get the dark cloud tempo. And uh, it's like, Khalifa's like, oh, I just need to pay attention. I'll be fine. And it's like, oh, you can't even, like, you won't be able to move if you go- stay in guard. It's like, ah, see that? I'll beat it with my soap sheep again. Because all I need to do is actually send o- off a bubble tidal wave, and that'll take care of you. I'll take yeah, care of all you. I don't, have to, I don't have to shotgun approach. That's all we need. Yeah. But uh, you, uh, Nami uses the cyclone tempo. In order to uh, create a hole in the gap, thank you, uh, Luffy and Zoro, for showing that they can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the one, she's like, the one who escaped has to be the real you, and it turns out to be a little Nami this time. And unfortunately, Khalifa spots her, gets a finger pistol. It's like, well, you're not going to escape. I'm going to punch you through holes. And Nami's like, ah, that was part of the plan. I left the dark yeah. cloud tempo behind, and it goes right from the black cloud to my climate baton. I wanted to be on the other side of you and just oh, straight through. That's awesome. I'm sorry. That's a great spread. Yeah. What a clever way of like just taking the Khalifa underestimating Nami. And, and I like it. It kind of shows Nami's bravery too, because you know, like it was part of her strategy to like, I'm going to, I'm going to have to get hit and it's going to hurt, but I need her to get close to me so that I can get, you know, the, the Thunderlands tempo off. Yes, and it's ah, it's such a satisfying conclusion. That yeah, she goes down from that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's the end of the fight. Like it's even mid chapter, and she is done. Then all of a sudden, here comes Frankie. <laughs> he's he's kind of yeah. pissed. He's, he's like, I'm, I want chopper. that deer gorilla. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and mommy's like, what's what's going on there? It's like I don't know. Can he really shape shift like that? I was like, uh, he's like, well. Uh, shall we kill him? <laughs> she just bonks right. him. Right. She just yeah, don't takes ever say out. that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. And uh, Frankie's like, "Oh, hey, did you actually beat her? Yeah. She has key number two. We need it." And Nami just starts ripping off her clothes. Ripping her clothes. <laughs> Frankie's doing the thumbs up. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, good thing we don't see Khalifa after this because yeah. I don't know what, what state she's in. Oh to be dear. Honest. Oh, boy. Uh, but, hey, speaking of key number two and uh, Zoro and uh, Usopp, well, we found out where Chopper ended up. Somehow he's yeah. 
entered the fight and is now attacking Zoro and Usopp, and they're just trying to stay away. Like, what is Man, that it really is. Chopper really is just like the chaos agent in all of this. It's just a wild card. <laughs> just about involved in every fight. But Zoro is also very observant in this. It's like, he's the one who looks like he's going to die. And we see, like, Chopper is starting to look really lo- rough. Yeah. So he's like, okay, it's draining too much energy. We need to do something because he'll run out of strength any time now. And all the while, uh, <laughs> Kaku and Jabba are like, oh, we don't need have time for this. We, we, uh, we got to go. <laughs> we, yeah, we got the Buster call to worry about. So we'll just kill everybody here that's in our way. And it, it's just, again, incredible to just see how much Chopper towers over even uh, Kaku. Yeah, no, he's huge. Well, weirdly, like, not as big as I thought, mm-hmm. seeing him next to, next to Kaku, but, like, still really big. Very much so. I mean, about the size of four or five men based on yeah Zorro. yeah so somewhere around there but we actually get to see an t- attack go off with uh with usopp using the nose storm the nose storm the bla- killer blade with the 36 pound phoenix which and i is love a- that shot <laughs> it's so good but it also is effective because it actually does cut up the ground like go zoro i mean we see him lifting <laughs> weights all the time that's not usopp is not as heavy as that yeah <laughs> just, the, the, the shot of the usopp just getting like swung around and he's just like, Whoa! yeah and then Frankie, uh, kind of filling in for Chopper, who was running around to all the battles and just trying to take care of everything, coming in, uh, kind of making that replacement now that he's done with his fight. He's like, hey, out of the way. There's no other way. I uh, A power has one u- uh, weak point. We need to blow him into the sea. But I'm dialing it down, so just back off. We'll be all right. Right. So he uses the coot event and, sure enough, blasts him right out of the, the tower into the water with Frankie jumping uh-huh. immediately after him. Oh, poor Chopper. But at least at least he got him. Yeah, he got him. Frankie's saving him. It's it's like he was definitely all in bad shape. Like it looks like the last time he ended up and we saw him in bad. Uh it was just yeah. like the that form takes so much energy from him. Yep. So it's it's better to do it that way. But hey, he's he still was able to take out take out one CP9 agent, so <laughs> mm-hmm. but sure enough, we've got the number two key and Zoro and Usopp are free, and we get this awesome posing. Yeah, Nami in the corner, <laughs> like that Kabuto weapon with with the, the with Sniper King's outfit just looks yeah. awesome every time. With the with the cloak, it's it's a good look. Yeah, yeah. it's like they're 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 about to drop the hottest album of uh, two thousand five. <laughs> uh huh. So we we're finally getting these fights. So that's that's yep. fun. That's I'm excited. Yeah, we we, we had our fun. We had we had Zoro uh, handicapped for a bit, but <laughs> <laughs> time to time to unleash. He's free to wreak havoc. Oh yeah. All right. Chapter four hundred and thirteen, Hunter, and this is the finale. <laughs> these like while those others are just re uh, remaking the Spiders Cafe wherever they ended up. This is it. Mr. Zero through three are going to impel down. <laughs> I mean, it's funny then that like Crocodile was just kind of like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Crocodile doesn't care. One, Mr. One is just stoic as ever. Mr. Two is like, hey, I'm down. <laughs> and Mr. Three yeah. is like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's about what you'd expect from all of them, to be honest. And yeah. it's an interesting, like, and as you, as we said, very sudden finale. Yep. Uh, to this this whole thing. But, you know, it kind of works. The only one that I feel kind of bad going to impel down is is Mr. Two. Yeah, he was doing it for his friends, you know? Yeah, which is interesting because he was fighting with Miss Merry Christmas when they met. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. He didn't he did not seem to get along with her. But still, he just I guess the, uh, the straw has to give him a new outlook. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's funny that we had the main story help inform where they were going. They, like this story couldn't have happened until after the stuff with Robin, just because the way. It yeah, happens. that's a good point. We're trying to prevent Robin from going the impel down, but these four, oh boy, they are. <laughs> they're going in. <laughs> Bye. <All right. laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Speaking of Robin, uh, we we start out the next chapter with uh, everybody still panicking that the Buster Call fleet is almost here 
and it will begin any minute now. So that 30 minutes has gone by pretty quick. Like, I'm not yep. used to going that quickly. She's trying to escape. Yeah, <laughs> Robin's kind of trying to escape. I didn't quite understand, but I guess with, with Luchi gone, you know, the, 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 it's basically just her and um, and Spandam. But I guess she was able to kind of get a. It's like she's got some distance between them somehow. Yeah, I mean, he was freaking out earlier about the, 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 the Buster call being, well, call used, I guess. So maybe mm-hmm. that threw him off and she was able to get away. But unfortunately, he might have not have a devil fruit himself, but he still has his Funk Freed sword, which, God, that's like weird to see from that other angle where they see the Funk Freed coming out from his sword. Yeah, that's quite bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, it's a sword sort of on one end and an elephant on the other end. <laughs> With a blade for a trunk. It's... Yeah, that's okay. It's, it's very wild, but that's unfortunately all we get to see for now. But it worked. The water did the trick. Frankie has saved Chopper, but he is well and truly passed out. So Chopper's out of the fights, <laughs> which I mean, yeah. there's not that many to take out left. I mean, who's who's really left at this point? It's Jabra, Kaku and Luchi, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we're I, I'm actually surprised how many. Yeah. <laughs> how quickly we're getting through CP9. We got quite a few of them down. <laughs> yeah, really. So he's he's just like, it's hard to believe even his bros didn't know how to help him. But, I mean, he did defeat him with CP9 agents. And it ain't easy, but I'll forgive you for his attacking me for the sake of your pals. So <laughs> it's just like, he earned Frankie's respect. But I love how he uses his foot to just pop, pop out yeah, all the just- water. <laughs> And then here comes Chimney of all things. Like, again, who expected Chimney to be this useful? <laughs> yeah. Or it's just like, hey, go this way. <laughs> yeah. I'll, we, we know where he went. So, uh, like, come with us. We, we can help you get uh, get Robin back. And Frankie's like, hey, I got orders for you and Kokoro as well. And uh, we get a little bit of flashback where Nami's, like, giving him the key or giving him keys three and four, telling him to go find Robin because one of those might actually open her co- her handcuffs. Uh, if they open, contact her using the secretary, uh, using Khalifa's mini tra- transponder snail. And Nami's going to go, of course, free Zoro and uh, Sniper King. And Frankie's like, so what are we going to do after that? Because even if we rescue her, we can't get back because the bridge to Enos Lobby is up. I, I love this calmness from Nami because I remember back in the day, she would panic over a lot of things. And now mm-hmm. she has this confidence to her, which I really like. Yeah, and uh, you know she's basically just like, all right, well, you know, <laughs> we got one, we got two choices, like danger or you know, ahead lies the unknown. You know, so you know, make your choice, and uh, we're basically we're gambling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like when we're done at the tower, we're gonna head to the gates of justice and leave the rest of luck. So there we go. Yeah, which I mean, look, they've come this far <laughs> on luck already. So <laughs> pretty much, yeah, in for a penny, I suppose. I uh, yeah, I guess so. Frankie's like, all right, I got to get delivered the key to the Nico Robin after telling all this to Kokoro. It's like, you guys bring uh, Chopper and follow behind. And I love that Kokoro is still drinking. She has a bo- yep. bottle of plenty, essentially. Seriously. <laughs> but God, that, that's a good panel there with Zoro, Usopp, and Nami facing off against Kaku and Jabra. Yeah, and the, all the like the smoke billowing around them and stuff. Like it just, it, it's really cool. Like because they're having to fight two opponents who are like just massively larger than the rest of them. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. But of course, the cool posing ends. It was like, how could you two be joking around like this? And they're like, blame the idiot, pointing at each other. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> they're both pointing at each other. <laughs> But Kaku's ready to get into the fight with his Tempest Kick, and Zoro is able to uh, deflect, and he's thinking that, like, ah, the neck is going to be a bit of a weak point for you, as, like, Kaku's like, nope, I can move it. My muscles let me manipulate my neck and use my nose like the pistol, and you get these odd angles for him. It is the weirdest, like, it's stuff, but it's cool. It's so cursed, but then, like, seeing that shot of him using the nose pistol and uh, Zoro like actually blocking it like it, it looks awesome <laughs> way better than it has any right to <laughs> I don't know how Oda manages to constantly balance these completely kill- silly concepts into something that's legitimately awesome yeah god it's it, yeah, I love this bit from Usopp he's like I know a thing or two about noses I've never <laughs> seen one hit like that like I, it, sure <laughs> yeah that's a, it's a bit of a problem and it's so strong that we see this square hole punch into a rock it's amazing <laughs> i love how nami is slowly like just screwing up the sniper king name <laughs> yeah yeah we just 
She's just given up at this point. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was originally Nose King, and now it's Usni- Usnipe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, get the name right. And uh, all of a sudden, Jabber appears next to him. He's like, ah, yes, Kaku has gained considerable power. Uh, he's just sort of hanging out next to him. It's like, Newsom's like ready to throw down. Like, all right, you're not getting away. It's like, ah, oh, no need to pick a fight. You just want to help your friends. It's like, I'm, all right, I'm going to take your key. All right, well, have it. Go save Nico Robin. I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like blood. I got to ask, were you fooled by this? Did you believe no. him for a second? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. He was bl- uh, he was bragging about how many people they ended up killing during their last mission. And as soon as you see that tongue wave, it's like, oh, yep. poor uh, Usopp with the 10, f- like his variation, the 10 finger pistol, which just oof, looks, which yikes <laughs> might be the most, <laughs> like the one that looks like it hurts the most. Like my God. Yeah. Cause it's got, cause you see that close up of just like, like his full, like fist going straight through Usopp basically. It's yeah, like, oh. with all the claws just straight yeah, in there. It's the it's amazing it did not kill him. Yep. And then I mean, I guess I guess it makes sense that he's a wolf that, you know, lying would be part of his tactics, which I'm I'm a little bit surprised that Usopp didn't see through being a, a liar himself, but Yeah, it's 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 unfortunate there and he's even admonishing himself as like how could I be such a fool? Jabra's, of course, giving him a hard time, but hey, Usopp, ready to fight back. Yeah. Using his new sunflower star. But unfortunately, the shave gets around the big explosion. But God, I love the Kabuto. I wish I wish Usopp was able to hold his own a little bit better against Jabra. But yeah, uh, it's it's no good. He just gets a boot to the face into the wall and not looking so good. He's he's basically down for the count. And we get all these wolf and shepherd puns and sheeps and all that from Jabra. As yep, he of goes course. On. <laughs> and unfortunately, Zoro can't do much to stop him because he's uh, he's in the middle of the fight with Kaku. And Nami's begging for his life. Is like, nope, he dies and I'm going to kill you too. And then all of a sudden, here comes Sanji. Kick to the yes. face, booting him away. Saving Usopp is like, oh, hell yeah. And I even like the, uh, the satisfied <laughs> from uh, yeah. oh. Zoro. It's like, ah, <laughs> of course, the, that guy's here. And uh, I, I love it. We had Mr. Prince before, and this time we get Sanji the Hunter. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> One of, I mean, Sanji always, I feel like he has the most hype saves because you, God, you, you never, you're never thinking about him. You're like, oh, man, when's Sanji going to come in? But. It was the right amount of time, I think. You're just kind of like, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, we were like, oh, yeah, Sanji is still here. And, okay, great entrance. Fantastic yeah, entrance. Yeah, so good. So good. But we have another SBS where we, uh, Oda has a fan from France <laughs> asking questions now. And he's just like, oh, wow, you guys are really far behind. By the time I answer this, uh, it takes about two, you guys, you guys are about 10 volumes behind and it takes about two years till you actually Good see this Lord. response. So oh. <laughs> hope you're still a fan. <laughs> yeah, man. Imagine that. We we get chapters same day as Japan now, but back in the day, <sighs> those, are, those, those were the dark ages. Oh, yeah, they were. And then we have, how do you even think of the questions like this? I never, never even crossed my mind, but somebody was asking, so as since Khalifa is the only girl in this uh, in CP9, when she uses the iron body technique, does she bounce? Somebody, uh, somebody had to ask I, I, it's for science, I, I guess, guess. But it was not even something that occurred to me. <laughs> no, and not like, like that. That's a level. That, that's a level of horny that I'm just like you guys are. You guys are depraved. <laughs> <laughs> it really is because I, I don't even think we ever see her use the iron body technique really. But Oda confirms. Uh, it's like even he says, "Like man, you guys are another, another girl crazy question from Japan." So <laughs> yeah, I love this. Like, we got such a nice wholesome question from France. It's like, oh man, my Japanese readers are just weird. <laughs> <laughs> but he does confirm. No, she does not bounce. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have got hit while he was uh, investigating. Yes, I believe so. All right, time for chapter four hundred and fourteen: Sanji versus Jabra. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we're back to, you know, we're taking our little breaks between our uh, story chapters. So now it's the crew hanging out with animals again. Yes. Uh, I, I always love these. Yeah. They're they're always just sort of fun and wholesome. So. Yep. But uh, yeah, Sanji's here to, to save the day. And he's it's like, how are you back to normal? It's like, oh, a bathtub fell from the skies and broke this, <laughs> broke this curse. Happened to land next to me and splashed me with water instead. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, and then I love that just going from serious, like, more importantly, Nami, did you miss me? <laughs> just, I wish the bats up had hit you. <laughs> I, I, God, the, I love the dynamics with these characters. They're so mm. good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then she, of course, notices Usopp again. She's like, no, Usopp. It's like, not even one Azilla will match a Sniper King anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just all right. Give it up. And and he's just like, I'm sorry, Sanji. I couldn't do it. It's like, hey, it's enough that you're alive. Everything has things that you can do. Look outside. The gates of justice are starting to open. So when those doors open and Robin passes through, the sea is just swarming with Neptunians. And beyond that is the great prison and Navy headquarters. She'll soon be, on, be, on, be beyond our reach. They're like, oh, God, yeah, was Luffy not in time? And I'm ticking. Yeah. And we, we don't see a lot of the fight left. Like It's still kind of... In the middle. We're definitely holding off on the Luffy fight for now. But yep. poor Robin's getting dragged by the hair. Yeah, I, I was going to say, this is the part where, like, Spandam starts getting more and more violent. And I'm just like, this guy is just just the worst. <laughs> yeah, he's desperate because he doesn't want to get caught up in the Buster Call. But he still needs That's Robin. It, yeah. so. which, which was all his fault to begin with. Ah! Yes, it was. <laughs> and we just, I like this these little panels where we just see what everybody's up to. As the, is this... All goes on where Frankie's rushing down, hoping to save Robin. And there's Kokoro, Chopper, and uh, Chimney. And Chimney, you know what? You'd make fun of her because they're in a straight tunnel, like where to go. But no, that'll likely help Zoro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just painting arrows on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Zoro's still in uh, still in his fight. So he's Sanji's just like, hey, things are about to go from bad to worse. And all the navies are still trying to fill up on the train. They're like, ah, bring a ship. Yep, it's like, it's how are we going to get off of here? And then we actually can see a nice little clever thing where Paulie reveals like, oh, he was actually, he tied up for his, himself with his own ropes. So he was actually able to get free and free the others because, well, they all left. He was just waiting for an opening to take advantage of it. Which, Man, yeah, that's good thinking. Clever, very clever. But yeah, they, they, they we see that the, te- the 10 Navy vessels are on the way, it's it's like, oh, things are not looking good. But yep. Sanji does say, even in the worst circumstances lies opportunity. Leave his key to me. I'll do what you couldn't, and you will do what I couldn't. And I, I love, love that, that play. from Sanji. Yeah. yeah. So he's, good. He's being encouraging to, to Usopp, just like, hey, like, yeah, everybody has things that they can and can't do. Everybody, like, has their specialties. And so he's kind of, like, our, like telling Usopp, like, read the situation, you know, what can only you do right now? And that he's the key to saving Robin. Yeah. Which we don't know what, the, what that quite means yet, but... <laughs> I, yeah, I have no idea what that means at that point, but I love that pep talk to Usopp. Yeah. It, I think it means so much to really bring him back into the fold. Yeah, it's important. And, and I think that, like... I mean, of course, they, they had the, that argument in Water 7, but, like, this is... I think what would they really think of him. And, and it's good for Sanji to say it. Like, like you have a role here, too. Yeah, it's it's you. You might not be able to keep up with the fight, but you are still holding your own. You're doing things that we can't do while we fight. And, yep. you know, Usopp's constantly comparing himself to these extremely strong guys. And he's still afraid because, you know, he has his cool Kabuto now, but he's still a normal human. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to keep up with that sort of thing. But the fact that that Sanji is giving him value, that's yes. good stuff. It's really, really good. It's 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 nice way to just keep bringing it in because it's kind of how Water Seven all kind of started. Yeah, it's really bringing it full circle in that way. Yeah, uh, but time into the fight itself, where we get just more attacks from Jobber. He has his Iron Body Kung Fu Wolf Bullet, and uh, Sanji blocks it with his leg, and unfortunately gets sent back. And while watching that fight, Usopp realizes like I get what I can I need to do, and he starts running off, and he's like. Trying to uh, Jabba's trying to get, go after Usopp, but Saji's nope, nope, kicked into the wall himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it, it, it's it's so cool seeing this back and forth. Sanji gets kicked into the wall, then he kicks Jabba into the wall, uh-huh. and Sanji's just smoking the entire time too. That's that's yeah, the interesting that's... thing. And uh, yeah, his kicks are still making his way through the iron body, but it's not quite enough to take him down. But uh, yeah, we just get this this back and forth between the two. That's so much fun. I really I forgot how good this fight is. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does come across as kind of a brawl, like almost like a kung fu movie, I guess is the best way to put yeah, it. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, well, Frankie's a brawler. This is definitely more of a kung fu 
type thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially with Jabba's clothes. Yeah, he's got the choreography of a, of a kung fu movie for sure. And we find out that Jabba's the only one that uh, can move, still move while using Iron Body. God, they really... Oda's getting a lot of mileage out of giving every CP9 member kind of like their own specialty. Yeah, I, I, I'm super impressed with how he made them all work within the same powers and still be different though so yep. that's yep that's good stuff but sanji knocks him down once again and that's when jabber gets up is like ah i've been waiting for a fellow like you enough of the pointless fighting go save robin robin and he, he drops the key too <laughs> yeah he drops the keys like again. i wasn't going to say anything but robin and i were part of childhood we uh, she's my little sister <laughs> and sanji well let's really be honest he plays along it's like i had no idea she never mentioned it all right just leave it to me i understand i'll take this key and go save robin and then he's like, Jabba's ready to uh, slash him with his claws. And Sanji's like, your tricks are stale. Haven't you been heard about yep. the boy cried wolf? And just kicks him kicks into the, him the ceiling. Face. So good. What a great turnaround. Like we yeah. I, he had a feeling he wouldn't fall for it. But that's... oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got Sanji really feels like he's getting his it, it's his comeback, you know, after just starting starting the arc here and immediately just getting beat by Khalifa. And now he's like, all right, time for time to let Sanji shine a bit. Yeah, San- Sanji is definitely the type that he's he's sort of the um everyman. He's he's strong enough yeah. to keep up with, you know, Zor- Zoro and Luffy, silly enough to match up with the others as well at times, but also like has his own weaknesses where he's like <clears throat> can get caught up in other things and it's just I don't know, it's he he sort of fits every situation that you need him for. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's why he fluctuates. So he's not always cool like Zoro is. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that might be why he's such a polarizing character too. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got high highs and low lows. <laughs> yes, yes, but yeah, let's get into chapter four hundred and fifteen. Heat up, as uh, we get this awesome spread where we got uh, the three musketeers. They're looking awesome. That's that's a good yeah. look for each of them. The, I, I was almost fooled thinking that this was like for like like a promo poster for one of the later movies. Oh, like, really? Wait, no, we're we're not quite there yet. <laughs> no, not not there yet. So, gotta give it a bit of a little bit of time. But yeah, get into the fight itself, and yeah, Jabber's head is through the floor, uh, and Sanji's giving a hard, giving him a hard time. It's like, yeah, you have to lie better than that. It's like, ah, did my kick wolf work on you? Yeah. And that's when he reveals that I got your key. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then I love <laughs> just you get that stiff from job where it's like, why you? And it's not just like, bye. <laughs> and I, like, love All right, this, I got the key. I love this move where he's using shave to come at Sanji and Sanji's like knows it. And it kind of knows where he's kind of going to appear and times it yeah. just right. So we can do a backflip kick and slam him right in the nose. It reminds me of um when Luffy fought uh, Bluno. Uh, it was the same sort of thing where, like, shave is really powerful, but, like, if you can kind of get a good lock on where they're going to show up, like, you could just just kick them where they're going to reappear or, or punch them. And it's... <laughs> yeah. And, and Sanji's kind of figured that out. And he's fast enough. And it's just... Oh, man. Again, the choreography here as he uh, takes care of him. But Jabra still tries to counter and still is still keeping up with them with his wolf hunt high-speed scratch that uh, Sanji has to protect about, but protect himself from kind of uses his arm to block it too, which I'm not used to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, better, better than the, the legs. I guess so. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard hit that sends him crashing into the other side of the wall. Chopper has a lot of varied attacks. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. He's got, his. got a, yeah. And you got the, the, the lupus fall tempest kick thing where he has, he shoots out like wolf shaped air slashes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty great. And uh, that's when Sanji gets up. Is like, ah, I'm not going to let you kill, you kill me. And I sure as heck won't go easy on you. And he's just uh, like holding his wounds and whatnot. It's like, ah, oh, you're mm-hmm. going to go easy on me. And I love that panel. That panel has yep. something subtle that I noticed as I was reading. I was like, oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. So if you look at it where Jabber's saying go easy on me and laughing, his nose is scrunched up to fit the panel. Like oh! actually, it's, it's actually drawn like he's actually in the panel itself, and it's just hitting a wall. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> it's silly, but a great effect. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he just sort of makes fun of Robin, and it's like, it's mm-hmm. like I, and Sanji's like, "Yeah, I better watch what you say." I get heated up when uh, I get angry, and Jabba's like, "Ah, you're just going to lose your focus. You can't do all this." And we're back into the fight, and uh, it seems like Jabba still has the upper hand a bit until. Sanji starts spinning. Yeah, he's just like 
what's this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is this? What is this all about? And that's when Jabber notices like, oh, his foot to- turned red. And then we get the Diable Jambe. Oh, man. And that that panel, too, of just like the light. Like, like Sanji's like all kind of shaded, but you, all you see is like his leg is just brighter than everything else in the panel. You're just yeah. like, is his leg on fire? <laughs> I pretty much is. It looks yeah. awesome because he's yeah. saying the high temperature increases the speed of his kick. You might even say its destructive force is d- d- demonic. And it does. It's not only just a, a, a high powered kick. It actually burns them at the same time. And it yeah. demolishes Jabra. <laughs> that panel, too, of just, like, you just see, again, like, the light and, like, the way that Oda uses, like, light and shadow to just, like, you you see the kick from behind. But, like, you see the impact of it just by, like, the like Jabra's gut is shining, but the rest of him is in darkness. And yeah. then he gets sent flying across the room. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, it's hot. It's I'm burning up. Even my bones are hot. And I think they're broken. Iron body doesn't work at all against this. What did Sanji do? <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, you question how the heck Luffy got gear, gear second. I guess Sanji was training, too, in between after the yeah. whole thing. Which... You know what? I wonder how well this would work against um, the ice. Oh, Aokiji? Aokiji, that's it. That's a good question. And while I will say Diablo Jambe, I, I, I'm I, I'm wondering if I should like put if this can go in like it might be a retcon is what I'm trying to say. Mm. But I think there is an explanation for this. Uh, but I, not, I think not... I remember the explanation as well. Uh, yeah. We shouldn't well, say. Well, there's it an yet. explanation beyond that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think we're gonna we're not gonna get to that for a long time. But this this makes sense knowing uh, it, it kind of in the broad sense. But it's still it, it is about as out of nowhere as Gear Two and Three. Pretty much, pretty much. But yeah. I mean, we're, we're, but it's awesome. So. It's a cool power up. It's a cool way to yeah, extend oh. what uh, Sanji can do. And that, as, yep. as we've kind of seen. This is the arc where they all get a power up. <laughs> they, yeah, they, yeah. And they get stronger. They, they, we can see the fruits of their like time on this on the Grand Line. Mm-hmm. They just needed to step up for this next stage because it's just gotten it just keeps getting harder. Yeah. But despite all that, Jabra gets back up and he's like, "I I can still take you in the air." And Sanji goes for him and he's like, "Ah, you got too excited and rushed your attack." So he comes at him with his moonlight 10 finger pistol and Sanji kicks one of that hands away. He's like, ah, you, you, you blocked one hand, but if you'd kick it been in a time, you could have blocked all the finger pistols. It's like, Oh no, the other kick is to finish you off. <laughs> and just, oh, just man. this is Diable flambe shot straight into the face with his fire kick and into the ground. Just sends him barreling down. Yeah, oh, this is an, another one where I remember the the anime version of this is so good. I'll have to link that to you later. But <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good hit, and yeah, man, I I that that's that's a fun fight. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. over at that point. <laughs> it's yeah, I, I if if not, then pretty close. But like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I this is might be one of my favorite Sanji fights. I I had always liked it, but uh, going back to it now, like it, it's so fun to read. The choreography is so good. Yeah, uh, I I have so much fun with it. I, I think that's the key thing. It's just, it's just a fun fight. It's it's it doesn't drag at all. It's two chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just like all right, we've had our fun with Jabber just being around now. Let's actually give him a proper fight and just seeing Sanji just take him on. So. Yeah, God, we only have two CP9 members left. <laughs> yeah, just Kaku and and, and Lucci with the original the two call coming. I, I yeah. mean, I guess technically we have Spandam, but let's be serious. Yeah, <laughs> do we? we just need to we just need to stop Spandam. So let's... yeah, <laughs> you could get him to trip over a rock and spill some coffee. He'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we do have an SBS where we got a bunch of birthdays from people based on their names. And uh, did, uh, I like how uh, Khalifa's ended up being Secretary's Day, which he didn't like, <laughs> even wrote. It was like, All I right. didn't even know that was a, a day. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a thing. OK. All right. Sure. Yeah. Which, of course, you know, they're all based on uh, Japanese puns, basically. Of course. We, we, of course. We've been through this. <laughs> yeah. We've said it a few times. But the other interesting thing here is that uh, somebody asked that if Aneru came down to the Blue Sea, how much would the reward for him be? 
and what would happen to the Blue Sea? And Oda just says, well, that's an interesting question, because the reward would probably go over 500 million, considering how troublesome. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that's a massive bounty increase compared to Crocodile. I want to say for a good while, that is the, like one of the highest. <laughs> yeah, it and is so. huge. I think that really goes to go to show Yeah, Luffy got lucky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even he says it's like Luffy only survived because he was made out of rubber. <laughs> so, yep, yep, but yep. he does mention, as Luffy said, there are other guys out there on the Blue Sea who surpass him in strength. And Neru can't uh-huh. be number one. Yeah. And that's terrifying to think about. That is, yeah. <laughs> a guy that yes, positioned the- himself as a god is not even the strongest. And that 500 million is like, oh, yeah, well, you're, you're up there, but you're not number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, f- fantastic set of chapters. Again, all fights, but they're fun fights. And they're so good. So un- good. Unlike what we had in Alabasta, where they could, you know, not all fights worked out the way they, uh, they like we hoped. And there was a few laws here. I think Oda's definitely got his fighting down at this point. The fight against Kuba Dora is the only one that I would really say is not that great, but it, it's it's over and done with before it. You know, yeah, it it, it's welcome. and that's more of be... just due to Kuba Dori as a character. <laughs> yeah, it's more Kuba Dori. Plus, it's it's more of a showcase. Like once Monster Chopper shows up, it, it's over for Kuba Dori. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh, that's the funny thing is that Fukuro stood out more than Kuba Dori, which is yeah, weird. Well, I, I didn't think that, <laughs> that's not what I would have expected. Nope, not in the slightest. But uh, yeah. Well, we got some more fights to go, of course, So we'll, that, but we'll have to see that next time. Because with that, I believe we've said all we've wanted to say about chapters 411 to 415. Thank you so much for listening, and if you uh, and you can find more of my ramblings and stream VODs over at BitNerd Games on YouTube, or BitNerd with an underscore at the end on Twitter. And Brandon, where can everyone find you at? I'm at Brandon Bovia on Twitter, talking about anime, manga, games, and my job, and uh, yeah, that's more of the same <laughs> yeah so if you'd like to help us out more you can support the podcast over at patreon.com slash Derek Bittner that's D-E-R-R-I-C-K B-I-T-N-E-R to listen to the next episode ad free three days early and make sure to return next time as we discuss chapters 416 to 420 of One Piece so until then my friends bye remember to take life one piece at a time Read the situation. As long as we have you, there's still a chance we can save Robin.